four feet in the air, and it's 110 stories tall. It was designed by Skidmore Owens and Merrill and completed in 1973. While I talk about this building, it's going to go in and out of view. No worries, when you can't see it anymore, I'll make sure to look, or I'll make sure to point so that you know when to look again. So for 25 years, the former Sears Tower was the tallest building in the world. When they count how tall that building is, they don't include the two white antenna at the top. If they did include the two white antenna at the top of the building, it would still be the tallest building in the world before last year. So last year, there was a building in Dubai that was topped off. Originally, it was called the Burj Dubai. Then they renamed it the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa is about double the size of the former Sears Tower, so that one wins. That's definitely, hands down, the tallest building in the world. But back to the Willis Tower. Inside of the Willis Tower, you can find 43,000 miles of electrical wire and 16,000 miles of phone cable. On any given day, about 12,000 people go to work inside of the Willis Tower. Luckily, no one has to go out there and wash the windows. It has its own window washing system. So one would imagine if a building stands at 1,454 feet in the air, special things have to be done so that it's not absolutely destroyed by the wind. Actually, the top of the building, the wind can get up to 200 miles per hour. So they've done a couple of things in the construction. For one, the Willis Tower is built in a tubular construction. It consists of nine boxes that are put together. If you imagine having a package of cigarettes and some of those cigarettes sticking out from the package, that's the basic idea behind the design 